Some would say the Mew under the truck rumor was one of the most important topics surrounding Pokemon back when it began, that it potentially made Pokemon the phenomenon it was. Others would say it was the missing no glitch and all the talk regarding its supposed catching methods, abilities, and creepypastas that were created. And while those have definitely left their mark in the series, I think shiny Pokemon have made a bigger impact. For the last couple of weeks, I've been breeding routes in Alpha Sapphire in the hopes for a shiny one. I've also been hunting for a shiny Trapinch in Pokemon Emerald, though I've never gone out into the wild and hunted for a shiny before, aside from a bit of RNG manipulation back in Gen 4. And I've especially never gone for a full odds shiny, so it's a bit of a new experience for me on that end. That got me thinking about shiny Pokemon lately, and thinking about the people that spend hundreds of hours trying to get them. But why? Why spend that much time? The Pokemon series introduced Shinies in the second generation with Pokemon Gold and Silver. At their core, Shiny Pokemon are only a simple color alteration, a palette swap, a bit of flash and sparkle, and nothing more. They don't get more stats or secret abilities or moves. So what is the big deal? Why do we care? Why spend the time to go after them for such an inconsequential reward? There is a 1 in 8192 chance to find a Shiny Pokemon between generations 2 to 5. This number was cut in half from Generation 6 onwards. However, Shinies are still very rare. Despite this increase in encounter rate, there are players who have never encountered a Shiny Pokemon in the decades the franchise has been alive. Even with the rise of the internet and being able to see thousands of Shiny encounters online, some people still see Shinies as an impossibility. After all this time, over 20 years, Shiny Pokemon still have a mythical element to them. It's this rarity that draws people to them. What is it that makes something rare that causes people to spend hundreds of hours hatching and catching Pokemon after Pokemon to get a shiny? People have the innate desire to want things they don't have, that it will give them a sense of happiness and fulfillment of owning it. Whether something gets put on a theoretical pedestal because it's externally built up as this great thing or we ourselves place higher value on something because of its scarcity, it gains greater importance. Gacha games are infamous for this. Anything in them can be exclusive depending on the game. Did you join a gacha game late? Probably missed out on a skin a character had that brought you to the game in the first place and can never get again, doubting your desire to even play the game anymore. A really interesting side story event happened and you get special rewards for experiencing it in the game even though you can watch them online? Too bad. No rewards. A limited character banner that won't return ever again? Unfortunate. It's these rare occurrences that give these things greater importance. And when we obtain these objects of rarity, we feel good. Spending so many hours in your favorite Pokemon games going for your favorite shiny Pokemon or your favorite Pokemon as a shiny can be a thrill. Having this end goal of knowing you're going to pull in that special alternate color of a Pokemon you've sunk so much time into gives you a rush. It feels like a built-in gacha game where you think just one more egg or just one more encounter because you think you're finally going to get your target. And then eventually, it hits. my gosh this this is the best shiny i've ever gotten in my whole life and it was live oh my gosh i can't believe it it's finally here i finally got it my longest hunt ever is over after 25,968 encounters i have finally found live my shiny ponyta on my leaf green version this is the best. This is the best. Yeah! I'm so excited right now, everybody. You get a euphoric feeling that all the time and effort you put into this search has finally reached its end, and you lose your mind screaming. And even crying. These moments stay with us Pokemon fans forever. The ever-elusive shiny Pokemon finally ours in our games and in our memories. I've been lucky enough to encounter shinies on playthroughs, receive them through trades, hatch countless eggs to get my favorites, and through RNG manipulation. But I remember where I was and what game they came from for every single shiny I hunted for. I wouldn't call them my most cherished memories, but they stay with me. And looking back, it takes me to happier times and actually makes me think about my life a little and how far I've come as a person, as silly as that sounds. 
Neat thing about Shinies is you can strike up conversations between fellow Pokemon fans and share in their story and excitement. You get picked up by the shift in positive emotions and not only ramble off your encounters, but you get excited hearing other people's encounters as well. The conversation is usually surrounded by joy and happiness. The conversation might even be about failing to catch Shinies and how close you were to having it. Because of this, you may get swept up in the adrenaline rush that it causes and you pick up shiny hunting again or even get back into Pokemon in general. There is another method of obtaining shiny Pokemon, and that is hacking. Hop on the computer, grab some software, and you're good to go. Some would say this can rob the player of fulfillment. It's cheating and even dismiss the importance of shinies, diminishing the value of shiny Pokemon. All of this has truth to it, but there are people who just don't want or can spend so many hours getting a shiny. A lot of people think it's not worth it, and understandably so. Some people just want their purple mudkip and move on, which is understandable considering the time sink. But there really is something special about encountering the Pokemon yourself. There's so much time investment and even preparation with shiny hunting. Like with needing a Pokemon with the ability Illuminate in Gen 3 to increase encounter rates or Flame Body Pokemon to hatch eggs faster. That when we do find or hatch our desired shiny Pokemon, we get that sense of accomplishment and that we earned this. And this causes us to be further invested in the Pokemon series and grows our love for this wonderful world of magic creatures. The brilliance of shiny Pokemon not only lies in its mysticism, but also its longevity. As players progress, they feel accomplished. But then what? You finish the story, but want more. Some games are blessed with a myriad of post-game content, feel like there's an adventure and mystery still left to be found, like in Emerald, Platinum, and Black 2 and White 2. Those games can be enjoyed well after the credits roll and plenty of secrets and new creatures to be discovered. Though there are unfortunately games in the series not with lots to do after the story is done. Battling with friends or online is an option, but not everyone can battle with who they want and when they want, or just don't want to. Some people can't afford to get games as often as others either, so they have to make the most of what they have. They can spend their time immersing themselves further in their games and try their hand at collecting shinies of their favorites, increasing their playtime by potentially hundreds of hours given their commitment. This could also lead them to be more invested and thus get greater enjoyment and love from that game. Shinies allow players to jump back into the older games, getting an almost fresh experience learning new mechanics and preparation needed to start their shiny hunting journey, as well as stick around in current games that would otherwise be dropped after the story was finished if competitive battling wasn't their thing. Because with the release of new Pokemon comes the release of new shinies, keeping the cycle going. It's a constant stream of content, whether it's discussed in forums or videos that keeps Pokemon relevant even when new games aren't being released. One of my most cherished shiny Pokemon was during the 20th anniversary 2016. But I want to preface a bit. I was getting Pokemon Y and Black 2 as a birthday gift, but got them a few weeks after X and Y released. I put a couple hours into Black 2 after I beat Pokemon Y story, but then I put it down. I played a lot of Y version and Alpha Sapphire the next couple years. I then remembered I barely touched Black 2 and went back to it, with only about 3 hours of the game. I was basically starting it new. I was going through the story as the player would, going route to route, story beat to story beat. I'm gonna spoil it by saying this, but Driftblim is one of my favorite Pokemon. Purple is my favorite color, and I just think it's a neat design. It's also a ghost type, which is a fun type choice with all the moves and lore that it has. So I'm in the library at my college, waiting out the time for one of my classes to start, which was a couple hours away. And I'm just going through one of the routes in Pokemon Black 2, encountering Pokemon in the dark grass, to engage in more double battles to see what pops up, because I don't know what's out there. I see a Driftblim scroll across the screen, and I gasp. It stops, and then I see the yellow coloring and shimmer. I gasp and say, oh my gosh, pretty loudly, and a couple people turn and look. I focus my face back to my screen out of sheer refusal to let this Drift Blimp get away. I put all my attention to Drift Blimp. My anxiety shot up due to the unexpected stress of the moment, but I carefully lowered its health and caught it. I was so full of excitement and adrenaline, I couldn't sit down anymore. So I got up and walked outside until my next class started. And eventually, I transferred it over to the 3D Pokemon games and have loved my baby ever since. I just find it so fascinating how a simple color change can bring so much joy and excitement and mean so much to people. All thanks to the game of chance.